For this episode, I was on a hunt. A hunt for bunnies. But don't worry, there were not real bunnies, just dust bunnies. Because today, we will look at house dust under the microscope. Dust can be found in every home, no matter how tidy someone is. It is composed of many different substances and differs from household to household as it depends on where, how and with whom you live. I, for example, have a dog. Here he is lying on the couch, patiently waiting for snacks. He was a great help in creating this video because he is the number one source of dust in my home and provides me with dust bunnies on a daily basis. So my dust will probably consist of a lot of dog hair and you'll likely find a fair amount of sand particles in it as well. Usually, however, dust is made up mainly of skin flakes, fibers, plant materials such as pollen or leaf particles and sand. But you can also find microorganisms like bacteria, molds and dust mites in it. In particular, the dust mites and molds have a high significance for us as they can trigger allergic reactions. To collect the samples, I use the vacuum cleaner to clear the floors of my apartment, some upholstered furniture and the dog's basket. After that, I emptied the container together with the filter and the result looks like this. Now I'm curious to see what we might discover under the microscope. First, let's get a rough overview of what's in the dust here. It is composed of an incredible amount of tiny particles. It also contains many fibers and hairs. But there is someone else hiding here. Behind these odd movements probably lurks the first uninvited, but unfortunately also unavoidable roommate. But we'll get to the bottom of this later. All these particles here are grains of sand. Usually, sand gets into our homes through our shoes. In my case, my fluffy dog brings most of the sand into my apartment because it's his favorite activity to roll around in the dirt. And since I live in a rather rural area, he gets the opportunity to enjoy his favorite activity every day. For some recordings, I will use a dark field filter as seen here. This increases the contrast and some details become more visible. Next, we'll take a look at a few of these fibers. Some of them are certainly from my clothes, carpets and also from my upholstered furniture. But the biggest share comes from, who would have thought it, my best but also extremely hairy friend. It seems that his second favorite activity is to spread his fur everywhere because this is all dog hair. A closer look at the individual hairs reveals some differences. Here you can see a hair from his undercoat. It looks very thin and is almost transparent. This is a guard hair from him. Compared to the hair of his undercoat, it is much thicker and stronger in its structure. So here's a little advice. If you ever wanted to get a long-haired dog, this is what you'll have to deal with every day. But now back to microscopy. This is some piece of plant material. And this one too. 
This also belongs to a plant, or more precisely, it belongs to a tree. It is a pollen grain from a pine tree, and in my house dust I can find quite a few of them, since pine trees are right outside my door. They get into my apartment through an open window, especially when it's windy outside. Another component of dust can be seen here. These are tiny little flakes of skin that both we and our animals shed every day. On average, we lose 30 to 40,000 skin cells per minute. And that is something that certain uninvited roommates are just waiting for. And there it is, the crawling something that triggers the urge in me to set the whole apartment on fire. Meet the unwanted roommate, the dust mite. Preferably it lives in your bed, but you can actually find them everywhere and in every home. They might remind you a bit of a tick visually, and in fact they both belong to the class of arachnids. Scorpions and harvestmen or daddy longlegs belong to this class too, because they also have four pairs of legs. In a way, a dust mite lives off of you because it feeds mainly on your skin flakes. The scientific name of dust mites is Dermatophagoides, which means skin eaters. Quite fitting, if you ask me. In return for your feeding, the mite will poop in your bed. It does this about 20 times a day. So with an average lifespan of 1 to 3 months, it leaves 200 times its own body weight in excrement in your bed. Sounds great, doesn't it? But all that poop isn't just gross. It can also become a problem for some people. The components of dust mite poop can cause allergies and, besides pollen, dust mite droppings are the second most common cause of allergies. It is estimated that 1 in 20 Americans have problems with it. Unfortunately, you'll never completely get rid of these little monsters. But cleaning the home frequently helps to keep the population small. Bedding should be washed at 60 degrees Celsius or 140 degrees Fahrenheit for at least one hour. Temperatures below that, the dust mites often still survive. I don't know about you, but the longer I deal with the topic of house dust, the more I get the urge to use the vacuum 24 hours a day and have the washing machine do night shifts. I still hope that you found today's more or less adventurous journey into the hidden world of dust interesting. If you want to join me again next time, you can click on the subscribe button now. You can also follow me on Instagram. The link is in the description below. Thank you and see you hopefully next time.